Richard Dawkins, who some of you may know, probably one of the most famous atheists in the entire world, gave a very interesting interview to the LBC, the London Broadcasting Corporation, and which has caused a lot of discussion about um, atheism, cultural Christianity, Islamophobia, and more. Let's take a listen to what Mr. Dawkins had to say. Church attendance is plummeting, but the building, the erection of mosques across Europe, I think 6,000 are under construction and there are many more, I mean, are being planned. So do you think, do you regard that as a problem? Do you think that matters? Yes, I do really. I mean, I, 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 I don't, I, I have to choose my words carefully. I mean, I, if I had to choose between Christianity and Islam, I choose Christianity every single time. I mean, it seems to me to be a, a fundamentally decent religion um, in a way that I think Islam is not. I think you're going to have to explain why you say that, Professor Dawkins. Why is Islam profund well, the, the pro way, the fundamentally way the, not decent like Christianity? Yes, I mean, the, 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 the way women are treated. I mean, Christianity is not great about that. It's had its problems with female vicars and female bishops and things. But... There's an active hostility to women, which is promoted, I think, by the holy books of Islam. I'm not talking about individual Muslims, who, of course, are quite quite different. But the but the doctrines of Islam, the Hadith and the and the Quran, is fundamentally um, hostile to women, hostile to gays, um, and uh, I find that I like to live in a culturally Christian country, although I do not believe a single word of the Christian faith. Okay, so that last part, that is what set the internet on fire. What was interesting uh, is that because we live in parallel universes, <laughs> on yes. my timeline, I follow, this is on Twitter, okay, it's just to reveal my own bias. Mm -hmm. I follow a lot of right-wing Christians in particular, just to keep my tabs on like what exactly is going on. And a lot of them were attacking Dawkins. They're like, oh, he tore down Christianity and he advocated for secularism and now he's coming back and calling himself a cultural Christian. And I'll just say this, like I've followed Richard Dawkins for a long time. Mm -hmm. It was a personal inspiration. I had my cringe atheist phase like anybody else who I was a young well. man yeah. on YouTube, <laughs> had copies of The God Delusion, gave them out to people. I read every book that the man has literally um, ever written. At least they stopped 10 years ago. I don't know if he's written His anything since. His pop science books, too, before God. Yeah, they were great. Phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, he, he, I, mean I, it's, I think it's controversial. He, I think he created the word mimetic, like the word mm. meme, which eventually became meme online. That's, again, controversial in terms of the, uh, the, the attribution. Yeah, the attribution of the term. Let's return to this. The reason I was annoyed by that is because having read and listened to a lot of Dawkins, even attended one of his lectures, we could put this up there here on the screen, which I went back and found, is he's been calling himself a cultural Christian here for quite a long time. And mm -hmm. why I was annoyed in terms of the Christian reaction to Dawkins is that Dawkins has always said that he ascribes, as he points out here, a celebration of Judeo-Christian type values, but not in the actual text of the Bible and of the religion of Christianity himself. Egalitarianism, equality, Quality, just the general, like uh, the general respect of English common law, which of course, you know, even atheists and secular people like me can acknowledge comes from a Christian tradition. That's what he meant by the term. So anyway, for me, watching a lot of the Christian right attack Dawkins as somehow being hypocritical. I mean, frankly, he's been saying stuff like this for 20 some, probably for before I was even born. But at least in my adult lifetime, nothing that he said was new. Anyway, I'm curious for what you think. So the reaction from yeah. the left, I mean, there was a little bit of commentary on the cultural Christian thing. Mm -hmm. Because it, I mean, I understand why people are like, your whole thing is being an atheist. But now you're like, well, no, actually, this is my tribe. There is something about that that you're like, all right, dude, like you're just making a full right turn now. Now, but the part that I saw more reaction to, and which I personally reacted more mm. to, were the comments about Islam, which, again, are actually not new. They're not new at all. From Dawkins, so who has been smearing Islam and, by extension, all followers of that faith for quite a while. And, you know, I personally think it's outrageous. And actually, to me, if you're a serious intellectual and you know that you're— you consider yourself a cultural Christian, whatever that actually means, you should 
interrogate your own potential bias towards this ecosystem that you grew up in and the you know belief system that has been sort of like humanized and made normal to you because he clearly has a huge blind spot. The problem is not any particular faith. The problem is extremist in any faith. I think we can look throughout history and see that. I mean, Christianity was used to justify slavery. It was used to justify Jim Crow, right? Do I think those are true and faithful readings of Christianity? No, but I mean, I'm also not a religious believer at all, so I'm not really the person to determine that, right? But even if you look just right now, what's unfolding in Gaza, which I think is particularly why there was, you know, a heightened sensitivity to mm. the smearing of Islam in this context is you have um, Muslims who uh, committed a terror attack on October 7th, committed atrocities, no doubt about that. You have a response from a uh, Jewish state and a lot of, uh, you know, led by Jewish extremists who claim to be doing this in the name of, you know, basically their religion and who have used and perverted and tortured that religious doctrine to justify a, a genocide. And then if you go back one step further, well, why do we have the creation of the Israeli state to start with? It's because of the Holocaust and before that because of pogroms throughout Europe which were by and large committed by Christians. So to think that any religious faith has a monopoly on truth and justice, or to think that any religious faith has a monopoly on violence and hatred is just, I think, incredibly ahistorical and inaccurate. So, um, you know, a lot of what I saw in my timeline, mm -hmm. which is, again, you know, I think to give us some credit, part of what makes the show yeah, interesting right. is that we, you know, have to expose each other to these different conversations that are happening in different corners of the world and in the, the internet, was a lot of like, actually, thank you, Richard Dawkins, for confirming what we suspected about your actually ideological worldview based on your previous comments, and by extension, what others who were sort of in this fervent new atheist camp were really about at the time. See, this is where, I, look, I guess it's time to piss off some of the Palestinian viewers here. I got to say, what I think Dawkins is trying to talk about is that if we look at majority Islamic countries and particularly ones ruled by Islamic theocracy, I mean, look, I've lived under Islamic theocracy in the state of Qatar. I wouldn't recommend it. I don't think it's a good way of living. Uh, some of that is rooted in the faith of Islam. Now, do I think that individual Muslims, as Dawkins was saying, was, are bad? No, absolutely. I don't believe that in for any individual person. I do believe that the application of said theocratic like law on people is very counter to a lot of the things that we value here in the West. So for example, egalitarianism, equality, the treatment of women. I mean, personally, I'm repulsed by it. Like whenever I'm in the Middle East and I see four women shrouded in a burqa walking 10 paces you know, behind their husband, I think it's disgusting. I know that they have no rights. In India, for example, where my family's from, this has been a huge tension where India has effectively an English common law system, but then you have 200 million or so Muslims who want to, or at least some, want to live uh, with their ability. This was a huge controversy about the ability to divorce their wives by saying that they divorce them as that required in Sharia law. And it comes into major tension because then they're saying that it's discrimination if you don't allow that whenever you're trying to have equal application and protection of the law. So I'm not saying individual Muslims are bad. I would never say that about anybody. I think that extreme interpretations, or I would more put it this way, I would never want to live under Christian theocracy. Mm -hmm. Came, got a taste of it growing up in College Station. Mm -hmm. I definitely wouldn't want to live in uh, uh, Muslim theocracy. Got a taste of that as well. Uh, and I, in general, you know, like and respect places, places like Thailand. I think India to some extent, Japan and others, which have non-Western interpretations and/or uh, worldviews in their governance. That when you combine with English common law and some Judeo-Christian uh, values and influence, you come to more of an equal application and understanding of the law. So right. that's where I will defend him a little bit. Okay, but what you're saying is different than what he said, because he, so secularism, as you're laying out the, you know, ideal of mm. the American model of, you know, freedom of religion, and we're not going to have a theocracy, that very clearly to me is the way to go. Because yeah, I mean, if we were ruled by the, uh, and we had an actual Christian theocracy with you know the minority of real Christian fundamentalists in charge, it 
how do they feel about gay people, right? right? What would that life look like for them? How do they feel about women and women's rights? What would life look like for women here? We can see with, um, you know, we had a conversation yesterday about ultra-Orthodox Jews within Israel. And, you know, Israel is yeah. moving more and more to being this overt, pretty extreme, religious, theocratic government. That's a real divide that is unfolding right now in real time in Israel. I wouldn't want to live under that either, and you're absolutely right. I don't want to live under a Muslim theocracy either. But to, you know, point to this one faith and say, oh, this is the bad one and Christianity is the good one. I just, like I said, I think if you take any, even taking religion out of it, if you take any fervently held ideological belief system, someone is going to pervert it to do horrific things. We've seen this throughout history. Sure. But religion is a particularly potent one. And perhaps my view of this is part of why originally I liked Dawkins and mm -hmm. you know I liked the way that he laid out these arguments. Religion is so potent because the minute that you see, okay, number one, these people who share my belief, these are the tribe, these are the people who really count and really matter, and God is on our side, the things that can be used to justify are horrifying. And, you know, I keep bringing up the example of Israel Gaza because obviously this is, you know, top of mind for me and many people around the world right now. But just think about, you have these settlers in the West Bank who truly believe that the righteous and holy thing to do is to steal the land of Palestinians, potentially by force and if necessary, murder them. They, they believe that they are righteously doing God's will when they do, just listen to that Daniela Weiss, that settler activist. Sure. She thinks she is righteous and absolutely moral. Again, no one faith has a monopoly on being twisted and perverted to justify things that in any other sort of moral context, you could see clearly that this is wrong, period, end of story. So, um, yeah, that's my problem. I with think Dawkins the problem is that what he's really referring to, and this is true if we look at the data, is that most Muslims are far more observant, at least, and also in a Western context when we're talking about the mixing, especially in Europe, than they are, let's say, uh, secular Christians in the West. And so when you have fundamentalist Islam brush up against Western democratic values, it leads to a lot of tension. I totally agree in terms of extremist uh, interpretations of all of that, but it is a legitimate question as to where should this be tolerable and acceptable but I, in I a wanna, Western style democracy. Even that I wanna yeah. dig into a little bit because why is it that you have um, such you know, fervently held beliefs? Because part of that story is US meddling in the region that you went against any sort of you know, secular nationalism that had any sort of tie into the Soviet Union or communism or socialism, we crushed. I mean, how many fundamentalist Islamic movements did we back and side with throughout yeah, the region? That's, that's not, that's but Of course, not, think about how we prop up the Saudi regime. Okay. I mean, so much of what is unfolding in the Middle East right now is a result of you know, our meddling and our policy over years and years and years. So I think to, you know, remove us from the situation, that's where this gets to me, and I'm not putting this on you, mm. but, you know, I listen to comments from Sam Harris, Richard Dawkins, and others. It gets to this place of basically insinuating, if not outright saying, well, these people are just barbarians. They're just uncivilized. That's part of the justification that's being used right now to justify this genocide of Palestinians that's unfolding in Gaza. Netanyahu saying we are the children of the light and they are the sons, children of the darkness. This is a war for civilization, et cetera. It ends up resulting in this argument that they are just inherently inferior, barbaric people. And I think that is absolutely repulsive bullshit. I don't support that, but I don't think it's America's fault that Saudi Arabians cut people's head off in the street. I mean, that's their regime. That's not our, I mean, if anything, actually, it's their own people that want something like that. I don't want to live there, and I definitely don't want any of that that's over here. And look, it's not America's fault that Muslims in India have, for example, have become way more observant as a, basically, as you've had Hindu nationalism on the rise. These are natural, you know, inherent tensions when they run up against each other for 
real, frankly, it's just a battle of values. It's like, what do we actually want? What do we, what, should we have equal application of the law? Should we not? Like, should we allow people to marry three people because their religion says so? I think no, but they say yes. I mean, it's one of those where I don't think that's on America. Like, and if you okay. look- why does Saudi have the regime they have? Okay, but it's not why just Why does Iran have the regime they have? Why does uh, the Taliban have power in need, Afghanistan? We have nothing to do with any not of that. Nothing, We've but just they also allowed have, free and fair elections and self-determination throughout the region. Come on, If Carter. they had free and fair elections, I guarantee you Islamists would still win in the entire- And by the way, I don't care. If they want to be Muslim and they want to rule under theocratic rule, be my guest. I'm talking about how we govern ourselves here. I don't give a shit what they do over there at the end of the day. But really what it is is that what I think Dawkins is talking about and what is a fair conversation is about here what we tolerate, what we think is acceptable. And I would stand what I think what Dawkins is trying to say for a Judeo-Christian influence, English common law egalitarianism, which is what I believe in. That is absolutely counter to Christian theocracy. Mm -hmm. Luckily, that is mostly on the decline here in this country. Luckily, we don't have, you know, the same Jewish level, I guess, here in the U.S. in terms of Orthodox Judaism, the taking over the entire culture. But that is not necessarily the case of majority Muslim countries that are all across the world. Indonesia, uh, for example, Malaysia, any of these places, there's high levels of diversity and others, but there are what I think are troubling ways that they do. He's right. I mean, in which they treat women or in terms of how they've different views of what homosexuality or any of this, I think it's abhorrent and I think it's bad. So uh, do I. And I don't think we should have but it, it here. it doesn't just come from Islam. I mean, again, well, I if mean, you look at what Christian, like evangelical fundamentalist Christians believe, it would not be good life for gay people to live under that sort of regime, which is why, to me, you're you're wanting to see give Dawkins the most charitable interpretation. And that's yeah, fair. Yeah, because I like him. That's fine. Yeah, that's fair, yeah. you know, to give him the best faith yeah. reading. But you're also reading into his comments a lot of things that he didn't say because he didn't talk about, you know, a secularism and a universalism. He didn't talk about common law or any of these things. Well, I'm just drawing He's from just his saying, books, he like, said very blatantly that, you know, New mosques are a problem, but new churches aren't. He said that Christianity is a fundamentally decent religion and Islam is not. I think that is total bullshit. I think it's xenophobic. I think it's Islamophobic. I think that it is, you know, completely at odds with the ideas. It really that you're promoting that the best thing is to have actual universal values, not yeah, this I sort do. of like moral equivalence universal values and secularism where yes people's religions are respected and they have a right and you know freedom to religion but also within the confines of respecting and acknowledging basic human rights and you know as i said before any religion taken to an extreme place yes ends in ugliness can end in ugliness can be easily perverted and um you know to to give any one of these faiths a pass for that i think is I just think it's wrong. What I'm drawing from is just his, oh, look, I mean, nobody can express himself properly in a two and a half minute clip from LBC. I'm drawing from his books, what he has put out there in longer interpretations. In general, if you are going to see uh, atheists and others, people who talk and debate some of these subjects, they're gonna bring up a lot of what I am. Now, I mean, a lot of Christians would be very upset. What they would say is that you're, you owe egalitarianism you know, to Judeo-Christianity, and I would say that's bullshit. You can look at countries like India or Japan or Korea or anywhere else that don't have majority Christian populations. Thailand actually is a country that I truly love, deeply Buddhist culture, lots of egalitarianism, mm -hmm. no Christian influence. So I can give the counter too, I'm only, bringing in what I think he is best trying to say, and I'm giving him charity because I also think that he's done a lot of good um, in this world. So and I opened up a lot of people's eyes. I will steal from uh, Mehdi Hassan's commentary on okay. this where he said, you know, if you just swap in Judaism for Islam in these mm. comments, imagine the reaction. If he said that Judaism is not a fundamentally decent religion, there would be a massive and correct reaction against those comments because they would correctly be seen, I think, as anti-Semitic. But Islamophobia is much more accepted, frankly, and is much more commonplace worldview um, in the West, which again is part of how 
this genocide in Gaza has been justified. And you see it very nakedly. Um, that case made very nakedly in certain instances, um, certainly from the Netanyahu government, but also from many Americans who see things through that lens. I think it may be true, uh, certainly, uh, that 9-11 and the lasting impacts have colored and have changed. I guess I just don't want to get away from legitimate conversations about, you know, about rubbing up against Western democratic values and what we think is acceptable or not in our own cultures, because ultimately that's what I care about. I don't really care what these people do in their own time and in their own lands. But I do really care whenever it brushes up here. And I do see often a very like permissive nature, unfortunately, by I think by elements of the American left, when they don't really grapple with some of the actual like tenets of, let's say, you know, of like widespread, like deeply fundamentalist Islamic uh, values, especially when we're talking about immigration, which is why I guess I'm standing for Dawkins in this entire purpose, is like, I believe very much in being able to scrutinize and to debate what is acceptable in US specifically in the U.S. and also in the West, what we want and what we don't want to encourage and what we think should be acceptable or not, as opposed to, let's say, trying to litigate how people should be treated in Afghanistan. That's Afghanistan's problem. Does that make sense in terms well, of what I'm saying? It would be Afghanistan's problem if we uh, hadn't. Okay, well, we're not there now. Now they can do whatever they want. And uh, apparently- Yeah, but to pretend like, oh, okay, no harm, yeah. no foul, you're good to go, and we had no impact there is- you know, the Taliban that's preposterous. Taliban that's rose to power in the 90s, too. They were, po they were a popular government, let's be honest. And nobody wants to admit this. It's not just America's fault. They liked it. They like In many cases, they are, the Taliban was enforcing their own beliefs, at least in some of these regions. I mean, at no. a certain point, what are we supposed to do about that? Listen, yeah. I don't want to relitigate yeah. the entire history of U.S. involvement in the Middle East, but I think suffice it to say that, you know, we certainly played a significant role in creating some of the backlash and in actively supporting some of these extremist movements that have come to power in various parts of the region. So in any True, case- True, but let's, they elect their own, Pete Crystal. But let's, I remember Muslim let's Brotherhood getting elected there in Egypt. Let's acknowledge that the ideal situation that I think we, and I wish uh, Professor Dawkins there was speaking to, was secularism, universal human rights, and values of the type that we see being trampled right now, certainly, I, yeah, sure. with Muslims in the Middle East. You know, I'm gonna reach out to him. I wanna talk to him. Hey guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com, become a premium subscriber, and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right, we're subscriber funded, we're building something new, we wanna replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So again, to subscribe, it's breakingpoints.com.